and welcome back to another Sunday Live. How's everybody doing? So today we are doing a Q&A. And I have some questions from Instagram. I have some questions from the Telegram chat. And I just moved. Last night was my first night in the new home. So I'm still getting like set up and everything. And I see we have a bunch of questions in the chat already. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Thank you, Tony777, for the super sticker. I really appreciate it. Can we hear? <laughs> Thank you, Tony77, for the super sticker. I really appreciate it. <laughs> You're awesome. Okay. All right. So I'm assuming you guys can hear me okay. Um, so I have some questions from the Telegram group, from Instagram. Okay, you can hear me? Okay, good. All right, awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and list off some questions that I already have written down so hold off on asking any question on asking any questions in the chat for the moment while i okay awesome perfect i hope you guys are having a wonderful sunday <laughs> okay let's see if the new place is good it's uh i don't know if it's fully sunken in yet because the past three days i've just been like crazy packing moving but um, the other morning, I actually woke up, not this morning, the morning before, with a message from the ETs, and they told me that there is a portal in this house. And if you guys remember from the Telegram group, and I shared it on my Instagram story, in the listing from this place on Zillow or whatever, there was a plasma UFO above the home which is just crazy it blew my mind and the like the the neighbor's address is 888 tons of signs and synchronicities so i think some really magical things are going to happen in this place <laughs> i don't know the details of the portal yet but i'm excited to see where it goes yeah portal in the house i know it's crazy isn't it Okay. Yeah, pretty nuts. So we'll, I'll keep you guys posted. Let me fix my shirt. Okay. So let me see. Where should I start? I'll go ahead and there were a few questions from Instagram. I'll go ahead and answer those real quick. Okay. Somebody asked, battery life of a dream on Instagram asked, do you know what Native American star family is? And the Native Americans, they're actually very, very, if you look in their like kind of Bible or their histories, their stories, they know that star beings came from the sky from the Pleiades. And and they know that they are genetically, physically related to these beings. So the Native Americans are very, very close to the star people. They call them the star people, which is really cool. And I actually have an ancient, a world UNESCO site really close by near St. Louis, Missouri called Cahokia Mounds. And this is literally the oldest city in North America, very ancient. And there's like mounds, not pyramids, but like mounds close. And it was a really, really big city. And so everybody just disappeared and it's a mystery where all of these people went, all of these Native Americans. What I think happened, because the star beings started showing me visions of this place, Cahokia Mounds, and they showed me the Pleiadians and the Lyrans there with the Native Americans. So I believe that these star beings actually took a lot of these Native Americans down to inner earth. Probably before, you know, like Christopher Columbus came and ransacked the whole place. So the Native Americans are very close to the star people and they know that they are connected for sure with the Pleiadians and there are probably others. So that was battery life of a dream question. Um, let's see, so Elegant Gardens on Instagram also asked about inner earth ETs. 
So the inner earth ETs, they've shown me visions of like they have, well, if you watch the Atlantis and the Lumerian activation I did on my channel, you'll know that a lot of people from Atlantis and Lumeria actually escaped down to inner earth whenever the tsunamis hit, the pole shift. So there's a lot of descendants from that in inner earth. There's also a lot of other types of beings, probably avians. Um, I've seen ant people before, but there's a lot of different types of beings in inner earth. And we did an inner earth activation not too long ago, and I met uh, this beautiful woman, Kay, who I found out I'm actually related to, that's my star family. So they're just very advanced. And they have like an artificial sun. I've seen long neck dinosaurs down there. So that's a little bit about inner earth. And Sparkle Everywhere 777 asked, how can I find out if I'm a star seed? So if you are interested in this, if you feel called to this, then you are a star seed. There's a reason why you feel called to this type of information. Not everybody on earth is an old soul. Not everybody on earth has lived in other star systems, but humans, so in that way, not everybody is a star seed where they've lived in other star systems, but all humans are genetically related to extraterrestrials. We have a combination, a mixture of alien genetics. So in that way, humans are star seeds. But if you feel called to this information, then you are a star seed. And if you want to know who your star family is, well, I do readings. I'm booked right now until October, but I'm going to be opening those up soon. You can sign up for the wait list in the description to be notified whenever slots open up. But you can also look through my activations and see what if there's anything that calls you if you feel drawn to a specific type of star being or ET race. And Chalice asked, if time is nonlinear, what is stopping us from tuning into another reality? That's a really good question because nothing really. <laughs> think of it everything is vibration and frequency and this is one of the most important things that the star beings have taught me so your vibration your frequency picture us like we're like radios you have to tune your radio to pick up a certain station you know it may be static on one, or you may get country on one, and you don't like country. You may get Frank Sinatra on another. So that's basically how reality really works, is we are tuning our frequency to experience different types of realities. So raising your vibration allows you to live in the 5D right here. You can live in the 5d on earth right now and so living in like a lower vibration you may attract negative things or or things may life may be kind of tough have you ever met somebody where it's just like they're making their life so so much harder <laughs> than it needs to be and it's like they're attracting more of that negative stuff to them I've seen people like that. I've been that way before. But what I found through after the UFOs started visiting me and teaching me about spirituality, and thank you, Logan, for the super sticker, is, well, they started teaching me about raising my vibration and showing me the law of attraction. And as I raised my vibration and programmed myself to think more positively, you attract more positive things to you. And also, as you're raising your vibration and living in higher dimensions, you can perceive things differently. It changes your perception. And you things just manifest faster. Like now, whenever I tune in, 
I may not even need to tune in. <laughs> I see signs and synchronicities all over the place. And like last night, I went outside on my porch for a minute and it was just kind of tuning in, looking up at the sky, looking up at the moon. And I looked at the trees and they're communicating with me through signs and synchronicities like very rapidly. I, so I was looking at a tree. I saw like the silhouette or the face of an ET. So then I knew, okay, there are ETs here. And then I would kind of just start talking with them. And then immediately I would see like a heart in the trees or a heart in the leaves, or I would see numbers that are answering my questions very rapidly. I saw a butterfly. So whenever you're, you can tune into that reality and have all of these signs and synchronicities and also have things manifest a lot quicker and just live more with ease. So you can live in the 5D right here, right now. And yeah, so time is not linear. That's one of the things that they taught me. We're experiencing time in a linear way, like past, present, future. But that's one of the first big things that the ETs taught me was that they showed me the number three and they showed me that time, the past, present, future, all of it's happening all at once. So it's like going back to that frequency where we're tuning our radio. What are you tuning into? What do you want to experience? You get, it's like a, like what Tony Rodriguez said on the Starseed Chats episode a couple weeks ago. It's like a choose your own adventure. You get to choose your path and it becomes easier as you go. It may be kind of difficult at first, but it becomes easier. And that's also how you can meditate and remote view places in the past, present, future, all over the place, because it's all happening at once. Yeah, you, can all, you guys can catch the replay if you're tuning in late. We kind of just got started. I'm going through some questions that I have written down. I have boxes all behind me because um, <laughs> I just moved. I'm reading off some questions that I got beforehand right now, and then I'll answer some questions from the chat. Okay, Nate Smiles Cutler asked, is there a proven step-by-step -step method to CE5? And yes, I believe so. It can be a little bit unique depending on the individual, and CE5 is just human-initiated contact with UFOs or extraterrestrials. And I actually have a video on my YouTube channel that is called How to Make Contact with UFOs and my CE5 story. And I break down my procedure completely. And those are things that I learned from the ETs. Whenever I began communicating with them, they told me, whenever you want to make contact with us, they showed me crystals, use crystals. That helps. That's like a it magnifies your intentions it's a power source these crystals they're very important crystals are in every computer crystals are in every watch and we have no idea the power crystals have we have not fully discovered it yet but it's very important whenever i see visions of ets and in past et lives there's crystals galore lumeria and atlantis crystals galore so they told me crystals, big way to make contact with them. And that doesn't necessarily mean to invite a UFO. If you're wanting to have a spiritual connection with them, crystals will also help. Frequency was the other thing they told me. Because these are very high vibrational beings. And we're kind of like down here. And in order to communicate with them, we have to meet them halfway. Same with like angels or higher dimensional beings. They can, they can lower their vibration to meet you, but you also have to raise your vibration to be able to perceive and communicate and connect with them. Uh, Christine asked what types of crystals. So quartz crystal is really good. I also like um, amethyst. Typically with crystals, the color of it has to do with a, a certain chakra, like the uh, purple of an amethyst has to do with your third eye and your crown chakra. So that's really good. I like those. 
And uh, selenite is also a really good one. Selenite is the only crystal that can cleanse and charge all of the other crystals. And it gets rid of negative energy. <laughs> Samantha, if you'd like to book a session with me, sign up for the wait list. Link in the description. I'm about to open sessions pretty soon in the next couple of weeks. You can also email me if you'd like. Okay, so, so if you'd like to learn more about CE5 or even just how to connect with your star family, definitely go on my YouTube channel and check out my video, How to Make Contact with UFOs. That's also how I connect with my star family. Nate also asked from Instagram, what do shooting stars mean during CE5? And this is actually a big way that the ETs first began communicating with me was through like shooting stars. So sometimes shooting stars can actually be shooting stars, but often whenever I was doing CE5, making contact with them a lot, doing a lot of astrophotography, they would like send me, sometimes their ships can look like shooting stars. And they can do that to kind of show you. So what I would do is ask, you know, if that's you, star family, can you give me a sign? Can you give me another shooting star? And then they might, or they might make a little flash, like a, or a little sparkle, or show you some other sign. So shooting stars can actually be ships. So if you want to see a ship, or you're out doing CE5 or stargazing or trying to connect with your star family, ask them to sh you know, show you a sign. Ask them if they can give you a, a, like a shooting star. But the, yeah, that's a good sign. I always ask, you know, if you're not sure if it's them, just ask for clarification and ask if they can do, do it again to show you. Yeah, I saw a shooting star on the full moon. I was asking for a sign. There you go. Yeah, a lot of times that can be their ships. And they can also do sparkles, like I said. They can also turn stars like on and off. It's strange. <laughs> or they can make the stars kind of look bigger or move around. I don't know how they do it, but that's, that's what they do. Nathan! <laughs> yeah, no problem. Aw, oh, both of those happened last night. Shooting star sparkle and several more lights showed up. That's amazing. That's them. That is them saying hello. And then there was another question that you asked. Not, you're not very spiritual, but you're skeptical with an open mind, which is perfect. I wasn't spiritual before this. Whenever I started seeing UFOs, I was not spiritual. I knew there was something else out there, but I didn't know what. I was open. Um, and they taught me. You know, as I started connecting with them, making contact, and then they started communicating with me, they taught me about spirituality. So you asked what, with an open heart, and that's like the most important thing, is having an open heart. Um, what do I do to learn more? You can ask. I would just start talking to them. Start talking to your star family. You have star family. All of us do. And just ask them, you know, what comes next? Ask them to guide you and see what happens. Um, meditation helps also uh and they'll kind of show you you know i was skeptical at first and then they kind of started showing me like law of attraction secrets of the universe and everybody's relationship is unique with their star families so some person may be very spiritual some person may not be that spiritual and that's okay we we're all having a unique experience and we'll have a unique form of communication and relationship with our star families. Hmm. I am not sure about a uh, star system type of souls do Asian and black people belong to. I am not I I think we're just all a a combination of at least 22 different extraterrestrials. They probably tweaked it a little bit. Um, depending on the, for the, you know, the different cultures, but I'm not sure, you know, the, the, the little details about that. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Okay. Stacy says she got the planet Mars turning on and off. Shockingly amazing. 
I think that's a sign that you have something to do with the planet Mars. I've also received visions of, um, of a man on Mars. They, I've seen him three times and I was told this was a past or parallel life of mine where I was a man on Mars. So you, that could be a parallel life of yours who's living on Mars communicating with you or an important part of your history. I see the praying mantis all the time. Yeah, mantis beings, I've been seeing them a lot lately. They are showing up a lot more now to help with our frequency. They are masters of frequency, masters of energy. I know there are some, um, some people who may have had negative experiences with, and there was a mantis being involved. Um, the mantises are mostly scientists. They are very intelligent. And so some negative ETs may have forced them to work for them, uh, but the majority of them are positive. So don't freak out if you like see a, a mantis sign. <laughs> I've been seeing them a lot. They are actually part of the crew. There's a mantis being that is a part of my Pleiadian star family's crew. So I'm finding that Mantis beings will be stationed on these different ships to assist with the frequency and uh, energy work. Yeah, let me uh, keep going through these questions real quick, and then I'll, I'll answer some questions in the chat. Um, okay, frequency music while sleeping, does it do anything? Yes, we already talked a little bit about frequency music or frequency. That's number one thing. And well, one of the number one things. So listening to frequency music while you're sleeping, you can listen to 528 hertz and it's 2.22 p.m. right now. 528 hertz helps to repair and activate your DNA and it also helps to harmonize you. Um, you can look up the Selfagio scale. That's like the frequencies of the universe. So that we're supposed to be working in these frequencies. We have a lot of negative frequencies around us, like from your phone, from electronics. Um, and there are frequencies that are kind of bombarding us that are throwing our bodies off balance. It can cause mental health issues, even health issues. So listening to um, frequency music can assist with opening and balancing different chakras and, and assist with activation. So it's good. I, I have frequency music playing in the background always. Okay, I'm gonna answer some questions from, from the Telegram group. Okay, Juju, J-U-E, J-U-E, I have signs from the clouds all the time but can't understand what they want to tell me. I'm not good at meditation. How can I create real contact with them? I would watch my video three ways that ETs may be communicating with you and you don't even know it because sometimes it can be subtle. Um, and often, one of the ways is they'll drop like ideas or inspiration on your head. It's called a download. So you may get a sudden idea or have a sudden revelation and it's actually the ETs or your guides or source dropping an idea on your head, but you just don't know that it's them. Uh, I would get signs in the clouds a lot, especially in the beginning. And yeah, at first, um, you kind of just have to put the puzzle pieces together. Ask for clarification. And if you're not good at meditation, you can just spend time outside, spend time stargazing and that really helps. You don't have to meditate, although meditation is good, but you can also go on a walk or go on a jog and just pay attention to ideas that pop up. Pay attention to your intuition. They communicate through our intuition, so trust your intuition. Trust your gut. Okay, Who Man asked, what is the point of soul contracts when we have free will? That's a good question. So soul contracts, those are real during readings. Um, they've shown me visions of like a piece of paper, a contract, like, and, and I have a contract um, 
with like inner earth people and these beings, a lot of these ETs that are coming to assist me, like the Andromedans who help with the activations. We have a contract to help, to work together, to help awaken everyone. So the point of soul contracts is things that will help you with your mission, uh, things that you have decided, your soul has decided that you want to experience. Yeah, basically. And if you don't learn a lesson the first time around, you may have to learn it again or try to learn it again this time around. And if there are if you feel like there are any negative soul contracts, you can also ask for those to be cleared. Like maybe maybe you keep attracting like a, a negative like relationship in your life and keep getting your heart broken. That could be like a negative soul contract and you could ask for that to be cleared. There are probably YouTube videos on this too. Um, Allie Milligan asks, so I've heard a lot of chatter about the incoming solar flare. Is it really an activation from source? I believe so, yes. And we actually talked about the solar flash in, um, in the Star Seeds chat interview with Ismail Perez. So you can check that out, Allie, if you, or anybody who wants to learn more about that. But basically, yeah, it's just going to be intense energy that will help activate us. Like you can open your third eye by staring at, not staring at the sun looking towards the sun and closing your eyes don't look at it with your you know just your eyes but that it's very activating the light we are all light and vibration so through our ascension we are changing our physical form and our metaphysical form to be able to hold more light we are becoming lighter and less dense so, and the, the sun is basically like a big ball of light. <laughs> um, Samantha from the Telegram group asked, what are the symptoms that your third eye is opening? I would say, man, tons. Signs and synchronicities, seeing repeating numbers, being able to see through things and see through people, like with what's going on in the news. Maybe you, you get like an intuitive feeling that it's all BS or you can see through the, the facade or, or whatever, however you want to call it, facade. So your intuition gets stronger. Your inner guidance gets stronger. And the answers just start coming to you by itself. Um... Symptoms your third eye is opening could also be waking up in the middle of the night, having an odd sleeping schedule, either being really energized or being really tired, having a lot of fatigue because your body is going through a lot of upgrades, and headaches also. So drink plenty of water. <laughs> I think that's probably good for the third eye opening. Okay, Stacy asked a question. Let's see. She asked, is it possible that due to some paranormal activity in the house that I grew up in that clearly had a dark entity that I have some sort of a block? I began to fully awake spiritually in the beginning of this year, but find myself struggling with meditation, visualization, and receiving any sort of signs from the universe. I do have a daily meditation practice, eat clean, exercise, and live a heart-centered life. Always felt different. Is there a way to know what may be hindering my progress? Do I need a cleansing of some sort? As you are awakening... It's definitely good to do a daily cleansing and clearing because you're also shedding a lot of your own negative energy and old energy. So you want to, yeah, do a daily cleansing and clearing and you can just do it really quick. Like visualize platinum light coming through your energy field, through your body, 
affirm to the universe you are cleansing and clearing any old stuck or negative energy i also have a three keys to connect it's like a 13 minute exercise on my channel that takes you through that process but you want to do that every day you can do it while you're in the shower too you can have old stuck energy just stuck to you and having paranormal experiences you can also you can okay so you can also if you feel like you may have like a negative attachment you can also call on archangel michael and ask him to cut any cords like negative cords if you think you may be having some experiences with negative entities but i would look into that more on youtube look up like cord cutting or you can also check out my live activation violet flame of transformation and clearing violet flame of transformation and clearing with that we got rid of all negative energy and the violet flame is also one of the most powerful energies that can transmute anything it can take any negative energy any situation and transmute it so the violet flame is very powerful um, so to recap you can do like a cord cutting use the violet flame definitely do a daily cleansing and clearing as a star seed just because like i said you're shedding your own like density so you just want to keep cleansing clearing that off and you're also becoming more sensitive to energy so that's just a good it's like spiritual hygiene like you want to take a shower every day you want to cleanse and clear every day and what else did she ask blocks so sometimes as an awakening star seed you may feel stuck or you may feel like you have blocks but sometimes you really don't <laughs> you are i feel like it's just part of the process because you're going through a lot of changes you are shedding your old identity and you are becoming somebody new you are becoming transformed so whenever the ufos started coming to me right before that i was going through a very difficult time and like my whole world just fell apart i got my heart broken and I, I was a nutritionist and I taught nutrition and cooking classes. I loved health and nutrition. And then suddenly I just didn't, I didn't feel it anymore. And I built my whole life around that. And uh, yeah, it was tough. And for a while I didn't know what I, I didn't know what to do. I felt stuck for like a full year even. So I, I put all of my energy and attention into stargazing and figuring out you know who these ufos were that kept popping up and while i was doing that i did i felt stuck i felt like i may have blocks but really it was just a part of the process it's like a butterfly you may not be blocked you may just be in the cocoon phase you're going through a metamorphosis give yourself compassion be patient Give yourself time. And then things will become more clear. Also trust. But in case you do have a block, what you can do is ask, ask your guides, ask the universe if there's a blockage that you need to be made aware of. You can also look up some videos on YouTube and do kind of like a little clearing any blockages, like a ceremony or a meditation. There's this creator called Melanie Beckler. She channels Archangel Michael and angels. She's really great. Her name's Melanie Beckler. And she does, uh, she has some resources and videos on cleansing and clearing any blockages. Good? Sound good? Okay. Mm. Okay, let's see. 
Okay, Ella asks, some starseeds talk about DNA upgrades in that some people already are upgraded to have 12 chains and people's body change from carbon to crystal. Can you say something about these topics? Is this process happening to all people or to starseeds or to higher vibrating people? I think it's happening to all, but at different paces. Like we're all starting to ascend. The earth is ascending and we're going with the earth. So it's like, it's, it's happening already, but some people are at different stages. Um, I don't know if anybody has 12 strands of DNA yet. I asked recently the ETs how many strands I had because that's like my my number one thing is <laughs> DNA activation. And whenever I asked, they showed me five strands. And I got just now that now I'm on six. Six strands of DNA. And Ismail talked about this too in our interview. He said that once you get to like 10 to 15% of your DNA activated, because right now we're at like 3 to 5%, just that's that scientists say that 95 to 97% of our DNA is junk DNA. It's dormant, it's not doing anything. So that means that everybody's functioning on like 3% of their DNA. But as we are ascending, we're, you know, being able to use more and more of that. And he even said, once you activate like 10 to 15% of your DNA, you'll begin having like superpowers, different gifts. Like with me, my first one was being able to receive visions and telekinesis and all of these things. So as we go, we will develop and activate more gifts. Um, yeah. So I think everybody's at different stages, but hopefully that helped clear some of that up. Mm -mm -mm. One N O K one knock. I don't know how to pronounce that. How do we tap into the super consciousness? What should we apply in our daily lives to be in perfect alignment with this perfect divine loving genius energies? How do we surrender in order to step into our highest form of creation? That takes a lot of personal work. It takes a lot of healing work because a lot of the time we have, okay, blockages come from, a lot of it comes from needing to heal, having wounds that need to heal. And that's one of our big missions here on earth is healing. We have ancestral trauma. We have childhood trauma. We have trauma from past lifetimes or parallel lifetimes. So that could be where a block is coming from or like a repeated kind of cycle. So I would focus on clearing those traumas, clearing and healing traumas, even if you don't know exactly what, what it is, ask and just focus your intention. Say, okay, ask the universe, ask your guides, ask your star family of the highest love and light to assist you in healing, you know, whatever needs to be healed. So that's a really, really important step. And what should we apply in our daily lives to be in perfect alignment? Also, affirmations helps, you know. I wish I could show you guys, I probably will, make a video on some of the affirmations and things that I was writing a year ago. It's like all come true. It blows my mind. So write a page of, you know, what you envision for yourself. Write your own affirmations. I am in alignment. And we are programming our body. We are programming ourselves, our consciousness, our mind to begin doing that. Just like if, if you, uh, you probably know people who are like, they say negative things about themselves. And it's like, they're just, prog they're just reaffirming that. They are just programming that into themselves and keeping themselves that way. But you, can, you have a choice. You can choose to be and do whatever you want. So just start you know, taking those steps, um, daily affirmations, daily mantras, journaling, um, spending time outside, like 10 minutes at least outside, it really helps doing a daily cleansing and clearing, which could only take like five seconds. And, um, 
and developing our intuition and talking, develop a communication, a connection with your guides and your star family. <laughs> okay. Um, Samantha, what was before Atlantis and Lemuria? They just started showing me this recently, so I will have to get back to it whenever I have more information. But I believe... I believe that our earth has reset multiple times, like maybe like five times. There has been, there have been civilizations and beings on earth for millions of years. They've shown me UFOs and the dinosaurs. So, and they've also shown, shown me giants on earth and a huge flood. This was all before Atlantis and Lemuria. So there's been a lot of beings here for millions of years. Um, Mm -mm -mm. let's see let's see okay reggie in an in an activation you mentioned the pyramids turning back on they have shown me the pyramids and you asked if there was anything else i knew about this they have shown me the pyramids quite a few times and have told me that we as we activate we will turn these pyramids back on and that will be free energy to power the earth like, no more Amarin and no more, like, you know, needing gas for your car. No more oil. Um, so that's what we are all important piece to that puzzle. And what we are doing now is beginning to activate the pyramids. Jay asked, why is Earth the main focus and not other planets? Well, there's a lot of eyes on Earth right now. There's also a lot of beings who have contributed to our genetics. So we have a, a combination of many, many, many different ETs genetics. And basically they were trying to create like the perfect person, the perfect human, the perfect being with many gifts and abilities like you know, taking the best out of all of these different worlds and putting them together. So there's a lot, a lot of beings who are genetically invested and spiritually invested because a lot of star seeds, beings from Sirius, Lyra, all, all over the place, Pleiades, are here spiritually. And also, what's, going, what's happening on Earth right now apparently has never been done before. So it's a really, really, really big deal. We've been on, like, quarantine. Um, and that's beginning to, to lift. And we are we're going from, like, 3D and basically just kind of trapped in a really dense environment negative toxic environment and we are ascending into 5d together and also there's more variety on earth than any other place we have more animals more t different types of people than any other planet it's kind of like earth is like a zoo <laughs> there's tons there's just so much variety and it was kind of like an experiment i guess um, but yeah, so there's a lot of beings invested in Earth right now. And also what happens on Earth will affect the rest of the galaxy, the rest of the universe. Earth is kind of like, like our ascension is going to tip the scale for the rest of the galaxy in a more positive direction. There are beings visiting us from the future. And if, if the negativity would have continued on earth then it could have spread throughout the galaxy so there are a lot of beings from our future who are coming back to prevent this from happening and that's why are we that's why we are here okay i'll take a if if you guys want to ask a few questions um in the chat uh, 
Ch Chanis asked, I would like to know about the benevolent reptilians and how they differ from the malevolent ones. There are a lot of different types of uh, beings with sort of like repti reptilian genetics, but they're like hybrids. I have seen, not too long ago, I met my first like positive full-fledged reptilian. And I think they were just saying like, hey, there are positive ones too. Um, and then I do a lot of readings for people and talk to a lot of people who have been visited by not like a straight up reptilian, but kind of like reptile features, maybe like the slit eyes or like almost like scaly skin. Um, but they're like hybrids. So like the star Sirius um, has tons of uh, just mixed genetics. So there's just like endless amounts of possibilities. But um, yeah, there are benevolent ones as well. Okay, let's see, questions in the chat. Hi, Robert. <laughs> How's it going, Robert? Um, that is a good question. If we are having many lifetimes all at once, then how do we have past life trauma? I know, I've had to like try to wrap my mind about around that too it's because even though it's all happening at once with our experience right now we are still experiencing it in a linear way so we chose in this reality to experience things in a linear way so that's basically why but yes it is all happening at once which is also why you can dip into these other lifetimes and heal them or view them, see them. Let's see. Robert asks, what's the biggest thing you have learned from your ET experiences? Oh my gosh, so much, so much. Well, time is an illusion. <laughs> everything's happening all at once and also we are all bits we are all bits and pieces of the creator and it's once you really get to like fully experience that it's magical like we are basically like mini gods walking around and we are beginning to tap into this power we also have many gifts and abilities things that would appear like magic so that's kind of one of my favorite things that I've learned. And also, these higher vibrational beings and realities are so filled with love and so pure. Not, not all ETs, but just the closer to source is just unconditional love. And it's so, it's, I mean, we don't experience <laughs> love like that often on Earth because there's a lot of, you know, duality and stuff. But it's just an amazing feeling and, and um, it'll change your life. And it's very beautiful. Um, Robin asks, are there any planetary systems that begin with Z? I know there's Zeta Reticuli. So yeah, that's, and with the, the biggest thing you have learned from your ET experiences, also there's just, there's just so much more to us. We are just, it's incredible. There's so much more out there. Okay. Exhausted the past three days. Any other questions? Jay, how do other beings create? Is it always just science with DNA tubes or mating? Are there other beings that can create life alone? I think it also depends on like what dimension you are in because our thoughts, like every time you have a thought that is manifesting, even though we can't see it with our eyes, we are creating that. That's why visualization is so powerful. So I think in other dimensions, it could be like instantly creating things um, and then also if you watch the Starseed Chats interview with Anita near the end, she shares how she actually met an architect of the universe. So there are very high up beings who can just create 
planets, universes. Yeah, and we're starting to learn more about those types of beings now. Um, what is the meaning of seeing shooting stars like all the time? I actually spoke about that near the, in the beginning, so you should go back and watch, but that's a good sign. <laughs> Basically, that's just a really good sign. That could be your star family saying hello. Um, Latuan. Can we assume that other planets are a bit like Earth? A mix of benevolent, malevolent, malevolent, and some who are in between the two. Yeah, I think so, yes. Like Sirius is a mix, and the Orion constellation is a mix. There are positive, negative, and probably ones in, in, the, in between who just, like, don't care. Or, <laughs> you know, they're just, you know, they just are. Um, so, yeah, there's a mix, just, just like on Earth. But also, like, the higher vibrational beings, um, apparently there are also Pleiadians. Well, there are many stars in the Pleiades, but there are also Pleiadians who, um, you know, don't, aren't what, what, you, what you would, like, aren't all super positive and loving. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's just a mixed bag. But the ones who are interacting with Earth right now and who are coming to assist us, very, very benevolent, loving beings who are here to help. Like I said, a lot of beings have genetic investments, spiritual investments, and a lot of them are us from the future coming to help us at this time. Mm, I don't know who the orange ships belong to. Okay. Oh, I'm scrolling down. Angel, why do I have entities that just hang out outside of my barrier? It's weird. That could be entities that just hang out. Maybe they're trying to get your attention. Like some people, or you could have a connection with these beings on a spiritual level, or they may work you may be able to just pick it up so they are trying to communicate something with you. Like, um, I don't mess with ghosts, but mediums, they may have spirits come up to them, you know, and communicate with them. Me, I'm like the ET communicator. So, um, yeah. Or they like your, your vibe. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure what the N24 deal. I'm not sure, Beth. Oh, that's like a, a gate opening, isn't it? Or a, a portal. I do not know. I will have to look into that. Probably, I'm assuming a surge of energy. Uh, probably the stars are aligned in a special way that can assist with the ascension and manifestation. Ava, you should also go back and watch the beginning, but um, that's, that's the universe trying to communicate with you most likely. Unless it may have been a meteor shower. <laughs> you can look and see if it was a meteor shower. Um, also, fireballs are a thing, which is really, really cool. But what I would do is, it sounds like they're trying to get your attention. Ask them for a sign. Ask them for clarification, the universe, and see what happens. Uh, Han, when people chose to ascend or don't ascend before incarnating, what's the point of trying? Well, we chose to be here and to experience this. So we are doing this for the experience. In other places, there may just be all like, love and you may be able to manifest instantly in in these other dimensions but then that would get kind of boring you know if that's all you are used to so it's kind of like a challenge we are taking on the challenge and as god as pieces of source that's what god 
source and we do we create things and we experience things so it's just something that we chose to do and then we are kind of living it out in the first person perspective for the experience i am not cole i'm not sure about galactic i do not know much about birth charts at all i'm not a birth chart person Okay, we've been going for almost an hour. I will answer a couple other questions. A couple other questions. Tina, how do we know what signs to look for when connecting? And how do you think we would know the difference of who is connecting with us? ET, ghost, so on. You could set the intention um, and ask specifically. Like if you want your... Specifically, you want your star family. So say, I am asking for signs from my star family of the highest love and light. Or I am asking signs from my angels or guides of the highest love and light. Affirming that to the universe, you are choosing that. And then that's what will come to you because you chose that. And signs can come in many ways. They can come in numbers. They can come in animals or insects they can come in um, symbols they can come in just kind of hits of intuition they can come in dreams um, they can come in many ways but you should also check out my video three ways ets may be communicating with you and you don't even know it that explains more in depth Latuan. So the healers from different star systems are coming to help us. Yes. And we are also activating our healing powers and abilities from different star systems. We each have a unique combination of genetics and a soul history and different abilities that are being activated. All right. How do you know? How do you, question, how do you know if you're reptilian or reptilian? Oh, if you are or reptilian hybrid or some is a reptilian. Sorry, I'm not sure if I understand that question. Are you asking if you are or how to tell the difference? I think they just, they look different. There's an endless variety of different types of, of beings. Greg, some are already here. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of healers already here. How can we move stuck energy to stop repeating cycles? Use the violet flame of transmutation. I have a activation called violet flame of transformation and clearing or look up little like clearing ceremonies, meditations. Nathan, this weekend is Dr. Greer's CE5 weekend. When I attended in April, I can say there was huge shifts in the Akashic record. There's a likely surge in love and ET ambassadors this weekend. Stay tuned. Love it. Then maybe we should do something this weekend too. Okay. Okay, guys, I think that's about it. Catherine asks, how many D3K2 capsules to take? Um, I don't know what milligram they are, but I would guess two. It should say it on the bottle also. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you guys. It was wonderful chatting with all of you. I hope you enjoyed this Q&A. Um, Um, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. So this Wednesday is here. Let me clear that. So this Wednesday is a, uh, star C chat episode interview episode where I will be interviewing John Martin, who is a CE five expert. He makes contact with UFOs and star beings literally every single night. He has incredible footage. So if you are interested and, and we also discuss ways that they can communicate different ships, um, how he makes contact, 
So if you're interested in CE5, definitely show up Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Central Time. Okay? Love you guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. <laughs> Bye. Mm-hmm.